the International Court of Justice, or the ICJ, at The Hague, which is also known as the World Court, held its first of two days of hearings Thursday in a case brought in late December by South Africa accusing Israel of violating its obligations under the 1948 Genocide Convention. Israel denied the charges and said it would defend itself at the ICJ hearing. Today we bring you excerpts from the presentation made by South Africa's legal team at the proceedings Thursday. Gaza which is one of the most densely populated places in the world, is home to approximately 2.3 million Palestinians, almost half of them children. For the past 96 days, Israel has subjected Gaza to what has been described as one of the heaviest conventional bombing campaigns in the history of modern warfare. Palestinians in Gaza are being killed by Israeli weaponry and bombs from air, land, and sea. As I stand before you today, 23,210 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces during the sustained attacks over the last three months. At least 70% of whom are believed to be women and children. Some 7,000 Palestinians are still missing, presumed dead under the rubble. Palestinians in Gaza are subjected to relentless bombing wherever they go. They are killed in their homes, in places where they seek shelter, in hospitals, in schools, in mosques, in churches, and as they try to find food and water for their families. They have been killed if they failed to evacuate. In the places to which they have fled, and even while they attempted to flee along Israeli declared safe routes. The level of killing is so extensive that those whose bodies are found are buried in mass graves often unidentified. In the first three weeks alone, following 7 October, Israel deployed 6,000 bombs per week. At least 200 times it has deployed 2,000 pound bombs in southern areas of Palestine designated as safe. These bombs have also decimated the north, including refugee camps. 2,000 pound bombs are some of the biggest and most destructive bombs available. They are dropped by lethal fighter jets that are used to strike targets on the ground by one of the world's most resourced armies. Israel has killed an unparalleled an unprecedented number of civilians with the full knowledge of how many civilian lives each bomb will take. More than 1,800 families, Palestinian families in Gaza, have lost multiple family members and hundreds of multi-generational families have been wiped out with no remaining survivors, mothers, fathers, children, siblings, grandparents, aunts, cousins, often all killed together. This killing is nothing short of destruction of Palestinian life. It is inflicted deliberately. No one is spared, not even newborn babies. The scale of Palestinian child killings in Gaza such that UN chiefs have described it as a graveyard for children. The devastation we submit is intended, is intended to and has laid waste to Gaza beyond any acceptable legal, let alone humane, justification. The second genocidal act identified in South Africa's application 
is Israel's infliction of serious bodily or mental harm to Palestinians in Gaza in violation of Article 2B of the Genocide Convention. Israel's attacks have left close to 60,000 Palestinians wounded and maimed. Again, the majority of them women and children. This in circumstances where the healthcare system has all but collapsed. I return to this later in my speech. Large numbers of Palestinian civilians, including children, are arrested, blindfolded, forced to undress, and loaded onto trucks taken to unknown locations. The suffering of the Palestinian people, physical and mental, is undeniable. Turning to the third genocidal act under Article 2C, Israel has deliberately imposed conditions on Gaza that cannot sustain life and are calculated to bring about its physical destruction. Israel achieves this in at least four ways. First, by displacement. Israel has forced, forced the displacement of about 85% of Palestinians in Gaza. There is nowhere safe for them to flee to. Those who cannot leave or refuse to be displaced have either been killed or at extreme risk of being killed in their homes. Many Palestinians have been displaced multiple times as families are forced to move repeatedly in search of safety. Israel's first evacuation order on 13 October required the evacuation of over one million people, including children, the elderly, the wounded, and infirm. Entire hospitals were required to evacuate even newborn babies in intensive care. The order required them to evacuate the north to the south within 24 hours. The order itself was genocidal. It required immediate movement, taking only what could be carried, while no humanitarian assistance was permitted and fuel, water, and food, and other necessities of life had deliberately been cut off. It was clearly calculated to bring about the destruction of the population. For many Palestinians, the forced evacuation from their homes is inevitably permanent. Israel has now damaged or destroyed an estimated 355,000 Palestinian homes, leaving at least half a million Palestinians with no home to return to. The Special Rapporteur on the Human Rights of Internally Displaced Persons explains that houses and infrastructure, I quote, have been razed to the ground, frustrating any realistic prospects for displaced Gazans to return home, repeating a long history of mass forced displacement of Palestinians by Israel. That was Adila Hassim, a member of the legal team presenting a case at the International Court of Justice Thursday on behalf of South Africa, which charges Israel of genocide in Gaza. We'll have more on this tomorrow. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.